days ago we uh, crossed the equator and in the kind of ensuing activity catching up with the Cinderella and getting into the shipping lanes and all that stuff we kind of forgot to celebrate and appease Neptune and we have to make an offering to Neptune as part of that process of crossing the equator. So we have a bottle of bubbly here to do the job. Indonesian bubbly. Indonesian, grown, apparently grown and produced in Indonesia. We're going to celebrate and pop it before we get into port in Malaysia. We must do that before we get into port and touch land. We heard you have to dress up for this and really we should be swimming around the boat but the water's not very nice. My hat's trying to fly off. Um, You've gone to town there, Rachel. Well, I thought I dressed down most of the time. I thought I'd dress up this time for this and uh, let the festivities begin. A for effort, everybody. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> Great hats. Wait, can you pop that? I don't know. Hey! It's a Neptune! Bottom of the sea! Yay! Drink up Neptune, this one's for you. <laughs> that one's on us. Cheers. Champagne breakfast. Champagne sailing with champagne. Living, <laughs> never been better. Living, real, real good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh, hey. That does not want to stay off. <laughs> well done, Rachel. Yeah. So, if you're wondering why That's I have this sweet. beanie on, it's because we're in the Northern Hemisphere and it's winter now. I'm surprised <laughs> there aren't icebergs. Yeah. It's so cold. It is a lot cooler, it even though indeed. we're quite close to the equator. Lastly, but not leastly. He's, he's very prepared very well in the hat department. Have a sip. Have a a chilly sip. Northern Drink Hemisphere it. winter. Oh, you have to. Drink it, Ivan. You, you have, have to. to. No, I don't. For do. Neptune. You do, do it for I've Neptune. Forcing, forcing alcohol no, no, no. on our 15 year old. I just. <laughs> yeah, head back. You yep, have to. Although, yes. next time you get in the water, Neptune will rip out <laughs> your innards. Come on, I've. No. Symbolism the here, I've. Okay, the bottle. Drink alcohol. Stop, guys. I don't even like it. No, it's a drop. Okay. Just a drop. Go on. Go on, I. The celebration is over. Oh, you have ruined the party. Hold up. Before Ivan killed the vibe, we had been enjoying sailing from Indonesia to Malaysia. Let's pick up a few days and show you how that passage went. So we're leaving Indonesia. It's been great. We wish we'd been here longer. We yeah. really do. But time and tide wait for no man, as they say, and we've got to keep moving. The lovely thing is we're traveling to Malaysia, our next destination, with another Belize, Fontaine Peugeot. Same boat as ours, same model. Are they the same year as us? Similar year. It'll be a year within Similar a year, year. Or two. Let the race begin! We're going to be slower than them. We will be well burdened, lowered in the boat, in the water with our gear, I'm sure. I can't imagine they would be as laden down as we are. But I'm just giving us an alibi, okay? Our hulls are filthy. I've just done a quick clean this morning around the propeller and the sail drive. and So there'll be half a knot at least in that I'm picking. But it's, it is going to be a, a kind of a sort of a race. The crazy thing about these guys is that we have met them several times over the past few years. We were actually hauled out beside them up North Sand in Whangarei, New Zealand. We were in boat works on the Gold Coast together <coughs> uh, back in 2020. Oh, then we saw them in Bali. And now we're sailing to Malaysia with them. They're from Austria, lovely couple, just two on board. <coughs> and may the best boat win. Oh, Robert. Ooh! Put your weight behind it. There's a lot of water in that sail bag. Yeah, we've had a bit of rain, eh? Yeah. Clean it up. Cinderella are taking a very different line to us. So that might be the last we see them until we get to Malaysia. Please explain, Robert. Oh, that's their call. They're just going out wider of the anchorage. They'll come in line with us soon. You reckon? Yeah. Are they going to take... They're, well, they're, they're going quite fast at the moment, they must be motoring pretty hard out. Uh, but it looks like they're taking the rum line and we aren't. They're going further starboard of the rum line, we're going slightly port of the rum line. Once we get out of the anchorage, we want to get closer to the next island 
<coughs> forecast predict winds forecast some quite strong westerlies 20 plus knots in about 36 hours and so we want to be a little bit closer to the coast if we can hoping that'll be a bit of a shelter barrier for us I don't know I mean it, one model suggests it's going to be not so bad one suggests it could be yeah 20 plus knots but we'll keep monitoring that we'll keep doing downloads and change course if necessary might even pull into an anchorage if necessary to escape bad weather Declan cometh the hour much anticipated pokery sweat. Since we first saw this beverage in Indo, uh, we've been having a little laugh and it. it's called pokery sweat. I've often thought I could set up my own little sweat factory. This is the kind of thing I would produce. Because it's like an electrolyte. Yeah, it turns out it's isotonic drink. drink. So it's not just sweat. Yeah. Disappointing. <laughs> Disappointing. And the verdict. Mm. That's quite nice. It's, ooh, whoops. Kind of tastes orangey. Oh. Yeah. We give it the thumbs up. Sweat gets the thumbs up. Mm, yeah, that's nice. Which is good because at the moment our water is running very, very yellow. So we'll all have a bit of sweat, thanks. That is yellow. Yeah, yeah. Then how, how are we going to fix that? What are we going to drink? Well, looky what Declan discovered in the build. Yeah. It's been sitting there. <coughs> oh, it's gone off. We got these when? Like well, June 2020. 2020. Special limited edition, the Cruising Kiwis Ooh. Bundaberg Wait. Ginger Beer. It's got our picture on it and everything. It's beautiful. They went off. Mm -hmm. on the 30th of January 2022 but they're fine <coughs> yeah almost a year out of date but they taste as good as new uh-huh and the people on the picture look as young as they do now yeah, yeah. nothing's aged mm. aged well like a fine ginger beer so day two it's been an eventful first day as in yesterday and last night in particular, we had a, a nasty little squall. Got up, got up close to 40 knots. I don't think we hit 40 knots. Pretty messy out there. It's a little bit damp. Uh, we're going six, seven knots though. We've got a smidgen of um, genari out. Well, I should probably might have a fraction too much genari actually. But we've got the main. The main should be, we should probably try another week for the main. It's okay, but we've got probably that much of the main at the, at the boom, the end of the boom, actually yeah. catching any wind. <laughs> the rest of the main's just sort of bluffing. I think it's going to drop back pretty soon. Well, it was all mayhem. We dropped the sail. We had the full sails up and we dropped them down sequentially. And then she rained like the bajingos. It was full on. You just going to serve me, Ben Beckman? Yeah. Um, is it raining? Oh, just barely. <laughs> it's just spinning a little bit. Don't know where all this came from. <laughs> it's actually quite um, invigorating in some ways, but you know, it's kind of those one of those times where things can break, or think people can get hurt, or thankfully none of those things happened. Kerry's letter and I had dropped the ball because I just wanted to see where he had left Indonesia from and it turns out they went to Kerry Manjawa which we went to and I had no idea he'd gone there. It says our next landfall, this is after Bali. Well, well I'll just clarify we had forgotten. <laughs> well, we have read these I things. have read it but I, yeah. I just I, it hadn't sunk in yeah. and we didn't mean to go to Kerry Manjawa. We, we weren't going to Kerry Manjawa no, were we? Were. And yeah. then we heard about a particular tree that grows there, which we didn't even go and look at. Um, yeah, just a little tree. And it was the oddest route that we took. It wasn't the oddest, actually. It was just out of the way a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> if we're going to Jakarta, we've been be out the... to sea quite a long way. Yeah, and then it's, came back it's out. not the way most been... people would go. And it's yeah. almost like we were yeah. guided by an invisible hand yeah. to go there because it says he left Bali and 
Our next landfall was Kalimanjawa Islands, about halfway along Java. It took us seven days, 120 miles, the best sailing we've had, no motoring after Bali. Kalimanjawa is 100 people, one nurse, half a dozen motorcycles, no bitumen, no immigration, and therefore no hassles. A little map of where they anchored, and we anchored in exactly the same spot. <laughs> and this is after I was telling Rob, don't go that way. Rob, what do you say to people who say this is a sketchy way to come in because it goes down to 0.5? Well, we don't go over the 0.5 stuff, that's what I say. But it's very narrow at the 0.5 area. Well, I'm using Zulu maps and they look, it looks pretty good on Zulu. Okay. It says, as you can see, we sailed right into the lagoon. It was good fun. The Indonesians loved it. It's a wonderful thing to have that same experience with said that we're having now. Okay. And it was such a beautiful island too. And we literally, we came, we went, okay, we're here. Okay, and now we're leaving. <laughs> Let's go to Java. It's amazing. That is actually extraordinary. Given he's, he, he made that map, and identified exactly where they dropped anchor. I don't know why he did that, because he's been in lots of anchorages that he could have done the same, but for that one he did exactly mm. where he pinpointed it was, and it's the one we didn't look at, and we just dropped the pick at the same spot. It's extraordinary. It's really kind of cool. Yeah, that's really cool. So some bad news, starboard engine has stopped pumping water through the salt water cooling system and it overheated. Uh, just refilled the water basket, tried to get it going again, didn't work, reprimed all the whole system, got it working forcing the hose into the system and that so it was working from the water basket through to the exhaust but once we put the lid on the water basket started it up again no wouldn't go which suggests to me one of two things it's either the water pump is not working properly or there's a blockage between the water basket and the ocean now if it's that then it suggests there's a plastic bag has been sucked up into the system Declan and I jumped in the water just before, didn't film any of it, uh, and had a look, a visual look at the leg, both legs actually, cell drives, and um, no problem, couldn't see anything. So I'm going to change the uh, salt water pump, I've got a brand new one here, I'll change the whole pump, give it another go, see if that fixes it, I'm kind of hoping it does. Okay, now you may recall I replaced the impeller, tightened the fan belt, and then, you know, a day or so later, overheat stops pumping water. Well, I, I didn't think for a moment that it could be the impeller that I need to replace again, but the process of pulling the whole pump out and replacing it, I um, pulled it off and then turning the, turning the pump, it just sounded a little bit funny, it didn't seem right. So I took the, name, the plate off, the face plate, and lo and behold, the brand new impeller has been shredded. I can't for the life of me think why that is, but one thing maybe is that I didn't push the impeller in hard enough, but it looks pretty flush. I don't know, what caused that? Any clues? Anybody got any ideas out there? What would have caused that if it wasn't perhaps flush enough? One option. But, I mean, this thing, and there's possibly... So that's what's blocking that intake? Well, it's just not pumping water out, not blocking anything. Although there might be a piece of this has gone into the, uh, the heat exchanger. Pull it out and see how much is missing. Whatever's missing from the impeller will be in the heat exchange entry point. So we've got three pieces plus that disintegrated. That's one piece there, two there, and three there. So there's one. There's one quarter and a quarter missing from that one and that one. So there's probably two little chunks that size have gone through. Amazing, that's incredible. That's really incredible. These are tough. So this is the replacement 
and Perla. This is the one I took out a couple of days ago. It's actually in really good condition, so I think mean, I changed it just because. So I'm going to pop this one back in and see how we go. Right, that cannot go in any further. That is. I will add, this is an off-market uh, pump, it's not a Yanmar pump. I tell you, Yanmar criminal, <laughs> like a bunch of bandits, the way they charge for the parts. So this is off-market pump, like a third of the price. So that's the way it probably crumbles for us. Okay, so the water pump is reinstalled. Very unexciting it was. I'm glad I didn't film that. What I'm going to do now is reprime the system, get uh, the engine running, pump it through, then stop the engine, let the basket refill, seal the basket up and then restart. Should be a Bob's your uncle, Charlie's your aunt job. Let's see how we go. It's working. Spot on. Hours later we crossed the equator by sailboat for the very first time. You can watch Navionics count us down from the southern hemisphere to the northern, though unfortunately we lost our video footage of this time. Kel Damage. Suffice to say, it was pretty routine. We pulled up to the equatorial sea barrier arm, flashed a smile and sailed on through. As we entered the Malacca Strait, one of the world's busiest shipping lanes, through which a third of all trade is shipped each year, we were back beside our buddy boat Cinderella to get some perspective on how large some of these boats are. That speck is Cinderella dwarfed by the container ship. They had been having alternator trouble and were down to one engine. We pulled in to anchor briefly so they could try our spare alternator, which was unfortunately incompatible with their engine. Yeah, that's a new one, but it doesn't work. What? This oh. is your op Really? That's yes. Those cinder and arrow there, we've been following each other now for a few days. They've only got one engine at the moment. <clears throat> so I'm trying to go along at one engine as well, but I find at 2,000 revs on one engine, they're faster than us. I have to go both engines at 2,000 at least to be the same speed. Maybe we're just too heavy, I'm not sure. I mean, we're the same boat. They pack light, those guys. You're fast for one engine! So therein lies the message. What's that woman who clears things out? M Murray Kondo. Let's get Kondo out there, people. It would be lovely to be Kondo. Light boats, fast boats. sailing. We've got two big shipping containers just off our port side or the left side of our boat. They're pretty big, pretty scary. They're going a lot faster than us. I'll shine the flashlight at the saddles so that they can see us pretty good. Then I'll shine it at them so that they know I'm definitely here. Howdy folks, it's 3.30 and we've got about 45 miles to go. So this is our last night, in theory. We have suddenly become inundated by fishing boats. I must say when I went to bed there were no lights. No lights uh, of any fishing boats at all. Just the container ships that we're carrying on out to sea. And we turned slightly to starboard to head towards our anchorage at Pankwall. Yeah, since then there are like, I don't know how many boats. 50 <laughs> and since I've been on ship for half an hour we have had four boats come within a couple of hundred meters of us going this way that way and, that, and the other and Ivan who I took over from said you know it's really hard to get your depth of field of just how far away they are until you're almost on onto them so a little bit of weaving but no it's not too bad actually there's a lot of boats do have uh, AIS on them uh, not all of them, of course, but I'm surprised actually how many do, which is a good thing. Otherwise, it's good sailing. We've got 12 to 14 knots right on the beam. We're doing 5, 6, occasionally 7 knots. So Ivan said he got up to 9 knots for a while there. 
on his shift. Yeah, it's good to say we should be there in the early afternoon today if this continues. Unfortunately, the fishing boats in the strait can earn more money from catching cruising yachts than fish. Unscrupulous fishermen have been known to deploy their nets at boats, mainly on anchor closer to shore. They then demand $500 for damages for their nets. Advice offered suggests staying calm, declining to pay, and letting the fishermen know you are calling the police. This is usually enough to send them on their way. The celebration is over. Oh, you have ruined the party. <laughs> All right, I'll have yours. Let's just high five. Woo! Connecting the alcohol through Wait our hands. Yay! Woo 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 woo! Yeah. And all who sail in a pink or marina, pink or marina. Just to confirm, we are at the green marker, awaiting instructions. Okay, can I will check you to two to tenders on port side. You can come to the stern in port side kayak number two. We are standing by for you. Thank you, standing by six nine. Right, I'm going to stand by. Okay, fenders on port. Probably as close to the pontoon as possible before I turn and reverse. I want to be close to reversing there. Nice work, Robert. Lovely job. I have taught you well. <laughs> oh, that one's a bit low. Okay. Nice. How do I know that Rob was the last person to use the VHF without actually asking anyone? He always leaves it hanging! Hey mum! Have that. <laughs> you left me hanging! Please stay tuned for next week when we fly to Cambodia where we reunite with our eldest son Finn to experience the wonders and horrors of this beautiful country that was the catalyst for our sailing adventures when the life of Rob's eldest brother Kerry was taken at the hands of the Khmer Rouge. This is the story of an innocent man brought to his knees and killed in the prime of his life and the impact his death had on just one family.